Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, look, I got to I got to banter on the last episode. Dying with Dark Judas is a little embarrassing, but we'll do a lot better today when we play. Okay, I was hoping that maybe we would get like Tainted Jacob, and then it would be comedic timing, and I'd go you, and then we'd win, and people would be like he's good at Isaac. Then I would random like Maggie and die on the sixth floor. People would be like WTF, mate? He's actually bad. Okay. Boss Rush, Blue Baby Samson. This is this is workable. I feel like we haven't played OG Samson in a while. I'm uh oh, oh right, this is the run we just died on. Here here we go dying again. Alright. Um anyway, I'm uh creeping into a whole new era. OG Samson, step to this, I dare ya. If you're wondering how you two can experience two deaths on the same run. Here's your seed, by the way, W2T9D1AB. Um, if you die, and then before going back to the main menu, when you're at that posted screen, you Alt F4 because you have no control of your emotions, and you're like, I just hate this freaking game. Um, that's how that happens. What actually went down is uh, I... Right click, closed application, went to the bathroom because I needed to make sure all 65 gigabytes of Hunter Call of the Wild that we're going to play with Mouth and Sips today could actually download in advance of the stream. <laughs> I don't have like paralyzed, parallelized, parallelized, parallelized. Um, how do you say this word? Parallelized. Baby, I'm not parallelized, but I seem to be struck by you. They wanna make you move. I don't know why it's now. It's becoming like a like a 1930s sort of Tin Pan Alley sort of thing. And what am I? What's the, what's going on? That's a great place to use a bomb. Is what's happening. Um, it's still Monday. Still doing well. Still excited. Still living it up. Still getting the bombs or key pill. Okay, eh, whatever. Who cares? Shot speed down. I, I don't even get out of bed for anything less than a tears down this day and age. And, uh, you know, feeling good. Feeling... I, I, we need something. I And, and I'm not... I, I, I had a great meme pop into my head related to what I'm about to say. You know, Do you know the, the meme image of the guy and he's, his face is contorted all funny? And there's a tornado in the back of the image, and he says, Here it comes! It's very commonly used, uh, at least a, like a year ago, whenever Fall Guys would make a post that's like, Hey, we added a new skin to our game. Um, there would be posts that were like, Here it comes! And then photoshopped on top of the tornado would be like, Dead game, dead game, Among Us is better, etc. Etc, etc. Um... I had that, but it's like whenever a streamer mentions that they don't know what to play, and then it would say, here it comes, and it would be like, Hollow Knight, Delta Rune, Doki Doki Literature Club, etc, etc. Look, okay, I, I, I'm not trying to bite the hand that feeds, like Trent Reznor here. Uh, all I'm going to say is, I, I'm don't worry about me, I'm capable of figuring it out. I, you know what, this is a good deal right here. Two cents to not have to use keys for a bit. I got some ideas. In, in particular, you know, ever since we beat Slay the Spire, I, I don't really want to... I Look, okay, so maybe let's bite the hand that feeds. I, people have been like, why not just play modded Slay the Spire? And I honestly think it's just like, I, I like Slay the Spire. I literally, like, put yourself in my shoes, okay? We went through, when we first started playing the game, it took me six months of straight losses to beat Ascension 20 with all three characters. It was a miracle. Uh, I feel like everybody, especially my accountant, was like, thank God that period's over. Never do that again. And I was like, all right, lesson learned. And then we burned off a lot of that ill will over the course of the intervening three years. And, you know, we decided to run it back with the Watcher. It was... Uh, a success. Let's not call it unmitigated. There were some, you know, mitigating elements. Probably some runs that we could have won that we didn't, but um, it took us six weeks to go from zero to 20, whereas again, previously, um, it took six months to go from 19 to 20. 
So this is a, it was a marked improvement without a single doubt, which was beautiful. Uh, and now, you know, we, we're kind of like getting out while well, the getting is good. Like, you know, we're selling near a top. The idea that like, you know, hey, you can only stop playing a game once you've frustrated yourself enough uh, to like beat impossible challenges in it and, and can say that there's nothing left to do. I'm like, nah, it's increasingly unappealing to me as I get older. I also feel like sometimes you just need some freedom um, to, to not do anything for a bit in order to come up with good ideas. You know, I, and I, I genuinely believe that. I mean, part of the reason that there's been like less uh, videos lately is because there's been, you know, family in from out of town and celebrating the baby's birthday and stuff like that, which is, you know, I will not apologize for. Um, although, I, you know, maybe you're like, I missed the video. It's okay, they'll come back. You take a long term, you know, her view horizon here. I wouldn't worry about it too much. You know, there's like 12,000 or 20,000 other videos on the channel that I'm sure you can... There's some of those you... I, trust me, I get the psychology, right? Sometimes I'll like, you know, there's a podcast that I like and they like normally come out with an episode once a week and then they don't come out with an episode this week. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah, they got 11 years of episodes I haven't listened to, but I wanted a new one. I'm standing still. I wanna make you move because you're standing still. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Um, anyway, I get it. I'm just saying. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, like being beholden to like there has to be. If you got nothing else to do immediately, then just fill that space with the same thing you've already filled it with a thousand times. I think it's. Uh, I think it works against me. Honestly, I think we can get more creative. Maybe we can find some time to try out some new games in that set in that section. Um, now and then. Doesn't have to just be Slay the Spire 247, 365 days times two. I was contemplating getting on stage, etc. etc. So we we've been very blessed to not lose our devil deal. Let's preserve that. We probably lost two spirit hearts here, embarrassingly enough. I think we should take our devil deal. I think we should let uh, leave it in God's hands. We don't know what this did for our HP. It, it did good stuff for everything else. I think we'll go to our curse room real quick and then we'll bounce. I'd love to play the Eddie room. I know we're trying to make boss rush as well. I'd love to do the Eddie room, but with uh, this curse, I find it untenable, undoable, unforgettable. That's what you are. Hey, would you look at that? Now we don't have a curse. We probably still won't play the Eddie Room, unless this is a lover's card. You know what? Who dares wins? You ever hear that one? Who dares wins? Fifty percent chance for a random chest. Sixty-seven percent chance for angel deals that I I'm gonna go ahead and say we're probably not likely to get. Um, we probably cannot take this all the way. Just my hunch. Like, I, I think it's going to be not possible for us to take this to... Well, you know what? Never mind. We, we might be able to take this to seven. Seven is not that, you know, egregious. Being able to buy a spirit heart is, is nice. Um, we don't have a key. Was there a key for sale? No key for sale. We probably do want to get, like, um, the, the jar of flies. Hmm. Wait, we're, this is not good boss rush etiquette, but... My hope is, of course, by doing all this, we're going to get enough gas to maybe have a little bit of a faster boss rush uh, chance in the future. That's my, my hope, at least. Anyway, that's, that's, that's the limited inside baseball that I'm going to give you today. Sometimes you need to have a little space, so you need to be a little beholden. Or un an unbeholden, I should say, in order to come up with something not necessarily super creative, because, like, look who you're talking to here, but, um, you know, something a little bit more creative, at least. You know, is we're not gonna, you know, maybe we'll wait on the new Firaxis game instead of running an XCOM 2 campaign. Shot speed down, speed up, experimental pill. Hmm. No fear. Some fear. Hold on, I think I heard someone at our door. 
Okay, one moment, please. <laughs> All right, we are back. Um, I need to figure out where... Whoops, I hit the pause button for a second time because spacebar uh, actually triggers the pause. Okay, we're, we're really back this time. We're gonna hit this continue button. I actually closed the game in the interim period, so... Oh no, we're at the end of the floor. Burning basement two. Okay, I remember. I remember, dare I even suggest, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. Uh, I've, I've heard tell there was something so special about that place. Even an emotion had an echo. In so much space, I think is how that goes. Uh, if, if I recall properly. Wait a minute, but we're starting from zero on our, on our, uh, Eddie room? Excuse me, devs, tech support, Tom Cruise in Vanilla Sky, tech support! I, uh... I found an error. I found an error I would like corrected. If you could hot patch it live to my game. That would be great. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually take jar of flies. Uh, and then we're gonna leave. I'm trying to think of where we stand here. So our, our HP got a little bit messed up by experimental treatment. Everything else is kinda okay. Uh, it, it's just HP that's the the mildest of mild concerns. I'll get that mouse pointer off the screen. Don't you worry, your pretty tiger head. We're gonna get you home to Tyson and your cozy tiger bed. Then we're gonna find our best friend Doug, and then we're gonna give him a best friend hug. I believe is the line from The Hangover. I will say, by the way, I forget what we were talking about, but um, I, I did watch a movie this weekend. My good friend Malf, also known as Michael A. L. Fox, uh, he he issued a couple recommendations to me. We we have different movie tastes, but they're not so far apart from one another as to be incompatible. Um, I love garbage. I love good movies. Who doesn't? Well, I don't know. I think like you know, some people out there take pride in not watching you know like art movies and stuff like that. Which is who cares? It's just entertainment. Um, but my two favorite kinds of movies are movies that are horrible and then secondarily movies that are amazing. Malf exists in like a pocket universe. He likes great movies. He likes bad movies, but he, like some of the movies that he recommends and, and has like a real soft spot for kind of exist in like a quantum superposition where I, I honestly, jeez Louise, man, come on. I, I, I really don't know where they stand, quite frankly. But he, he recommended um, a movie to me that came out on Netflix called The Ice Road. Starring Liam Neeson and Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, I know what you're going to say. Wait a minute. Did this come out in, uh, you know, maybe like the late 1990s? When both of these actors were at the height of their critical powers? No, it came out uh, like last week. It is a Canadian movie, which is, well, I don't know if it's Canadian, but it's like, <laughs> there's a lot of, I say this as a Canadian, there's a lot of, I, I'm not used to hearing my own accent in, on film, you know? There's a lot of Canadian actors and actresses, but they all kind of have to sound like they're from, uh, you know, like a nondescript part of, like, they, they, they all have to sound like they're from San Francisco, basically, in order to make it in Hollywood, you know? They either have kind of like a rounded off American accent, whereas in Canada, we're all like, Oh, you see, you don't get skookum down to Okanagan, bud. You know, just don't even get up out of your Muskoka chair. Don't tip over your McClays. You know, I wouldn't want you to hurt your koozie. But it's about a, um, <laughs> it's, it, bear with me here. It is a, uh, a, a crime caper about a mining accident that happens in, uh, Northern Manitoba at a, uh, I don't know what the mine is for, honestly, but then the only way to save these trapped miners, I know they, they can't call Elon. Elon said, don't call me this time. I don't want to see it. I got in so much trouble last time. Uh, instead, the only way they can save these trapped miners is to run some wellheads. I'll admit readily, I don't really know what those are. Um, they have to run some wellheads up from North Dakota all the way up to, the, like, northern Manitoba. They only have 30 hours before the miners run out of oxygen. And it's a treacherous ice road because it's it, it's an iced-over lake they're driving over. 
and it's a sunny April day. So that you know there's going to be hijinks. Um, it's re... Oh, jeez. Look at that. It's really bad. Um, but is it so bad it's good? I would say yes. I would say Mouth did a good job on this recommendation. I know everyone's going gaga over Squid Game right now. I am also uh, watching Squid Game. No spoilerinos, please. I'm only on uh, episode three. Been very tired lately. <laughs> just, just genuinely. <laughs> so, too, too tired to watch television is like a good marker for like. Well, yeah, it's not too tired to watch TV. I probably could have watched like six 20 minute episodes or something, but like two one hour long episodes. Hey, man, even though it's an equivalent amount of time, you know, you're asking for a bigger and bigger buy in, right? That, that that one hour buy-in can it, sometimes it's like ah, I'm just gonna go to bed. Anyway, Squid Game I I've been enjoying. I I, I have nothing uh, negative to say. I'm I'm not quite through it yet. It is it's funny watching Squid Game with Kate because she actually knows like some of the games, which provides a greater level of context. Like again, this is a slight spoiler, but you know when they play the game with the shapes. She was like, oh, you don't want to be on that shape because it's impossible. I was like, I wonder like, if you have no context for this. <laughs> I wonder if it's a different watch. Because for me, I was like, uh-oh, you don't want to be on that shape. For her, you know, for, for other people who might not, you know, have, have that benefit of like, a, you know, a cultural localizer. I don't know, but that's, you know, it's, it's a fair trade. Um, she makes it so like I'm accommodated when I'm watching something like Squid Game, and I uh, explain to her what the Canadians are saying in uh, Ice Road. It's a it's a it's a very groovy combination, baby. Yeah, I don't really want either of those to be honest. I I could be persuaded if it weren't for the fact that it would take us down to one HP. I've been like pretty bad at Isaac lately. I'm just gonna acknowledge that. I'm gonna I'm gonna own it. I'm gonna say you know we're gonna try to do better, but I do you know I I ask for your forgiveness as we we do our best here or pretend to do our best at least. Can you just like pop up? Just 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 be cool and pop up. Thank you. Not bad. <clears throat> I'm hoping like at, at some point we get an arcade as well. Uh, those tend to be kind of good. Justice is pretty good. Um, and we get it gave us a temperance, which is fine. So hanged man is okay as well. Uh, we'll we'll blow this up. Mostly just for the money there. Take temperance with us, and then we can use that as leverage. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Like, I don't think we're making boss rush. I I'm genuinely looking at it. <laughs> I'm like. I don't think I've I've gone slow for bad reasons. I think, you know, people want to see Eddie Rooms. I want to play Eddie Rooms. That's a good mix. The boss rush does not determine, you know, where the run goes. I determine where the run goes. And, you know, I, I'm happy to pilot there. I look at it like, like I'm kind of like a taxi driver, right? And then, you know, the passenger is requesting that, oh, if you want to get to the airport, you got to take Canby South. And I'm like, you know... We could take Canby South, or we could uh, we could take Maine instead, because I'm a professional driver. I know that the traffic on Maine is not as bad as Canby this time of the day. Um, you know, the passenger might get a little upset, but as long as I'm operating with my fiduciary uh, taxi driving obligation to get them there in the safest and fastest way reasonably possible then i feel like they have no license to complain i'm the flip side like i mean i haven't been in a taxi in like five years uh partly because of the pandemic obviously but um i also sort of feel like whenever a taxi driver is like hey what route do you want to take i'm like um shouldn't you like shouldn't i be asking you that like when I, if I was getting a colonoscopy, I, I don't think that if the if the doctor was like, "Hey, do you want me to come at this one from the front or the back?" I'd be like, "I don't know, sir. I haven't been to med school." I was kind of relying on you for that one. I thought. I still don't think we want the. I don't think we want. It. I don't think we want the sacrificial dagger here. Quite frankly. 
Look, I'll keep making the jokes that nobody laughs at. You help me get to my destination in a reasonable amount of time. Preferably without throwing up from motion sickness on the way. But anyway, yeah, I've been I've been enjoying Squid Game. Uh, the Ice Road, I, I would certainly... Um, it's, it's funny because it starts as like kind of a, a disaster movie and then it turns into almost like a heist. <laughs> Liam Neeson's been doing... He, he's been in the cold. Ever since that guy got old, he's been cold. You know, he did those Taken movies. Those are less, you know, cold. They're more like, you know, Southern Europe. Um, I think it's Southern Europe. I can't remember where the first Taken was. Also known as the only one that was kind of good. Um, if even. Help me. Uh, but then, like, you know, we did... Um, Oh, what, you know, at first, okay, he did The Grey with the wolves in, like, 2012 or whatever. And then he did uh, this, The Ice Road, and then he did the one where he's, I want to call it Drive Angry. You know, the one where he's in the, he, he's a snowplow driver getting revenge on the people who uh, allowed his son to succumb to addiction. What, what is that one? I, I honestly thought that movie was kind of good. I know it's a remake. Hold on. Liam... Neeson snowplow cold pursuit that's it <laughs> I would not suggest it's high art or the greatest movie ever made but uh, I I was like by by Liam Neeson you know boomer core standards I forget what they call those those the oh the geezer teasers yeah by by geezer teaser standards I I was like this is not horrible Partly also, you know, it's one of those things where, like, it was filmed in the lower mainland of uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, and I found myself being like, okay, I know that place. Wow, you, geez, look at that. Ignoring the obvious uh, humor involved in setting a movie with a hellish winter in uh, the part of Canada that has the mildest winters. Maybe next to Victoria. I apologize for always overlooking my island neighbors. Uh, I forget about them sometimes uh, until they start to complain about their COVID numbers increasing because, um, you know, people from the mainland are coming over to the island. Sorry, it's not... Look, you you piece. <laughs> you, you Get back here. You're a fake and a fraud. You're not an intellectual. Getting a lot of dubious items lately. I imagine if you're from Victoria, you're laughing right now. You're like, I didn't know you could see those posts. Oh, I see them. I see it all, man. The Panopticon. I'm like Major Kusanagi at the end of Ghost in the Shell. I see everything. And then I ride off on my bicycle. On the grass. Um, we should grab this. I, I take no pleasure in doing this. I think we could kill the angel statue. The only question is, like, what's the point, right? Like, what's the point, man? What's what's the point of any of it? I guess it's to get a, a blood bag. <laughs> that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the point. Hold on. And uh, th like, what you heard there was basically my weekend. What? I watched. Well, we had the the baby's party. Um, I watched three episodes of Squid Game. And while setting my videos on Friday night, I watched uh, The Ice Road starring Liam Neeson and Lawrence Fishburne. And that's it, man. That's that's it. Can I get a scapular play here or am I dumb? I honestly stand by that as just being like a, 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 a way to learn a valuable lesson. Now, I've put myself at great personal peril. But I... I Scapular, it only works if we get down to a half red heart. Maybe maybe that's true. Maybe that's the way the cookie crumbles. Hey, I got a fly. Yeah, could you, like, do your job? Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, in hindsight, of course, would I ever say, is it worth it to do what we did there? No, I would say, like, it's decidedly, obviously the opposite if you're trying to win. But like I've been going down this road for a long time, man. I've been on, I've been, I, I you know that song? I've been everywhere, man. I've actually like it, that's me, but I've actually been everywhere, man. At least in Isaac, in in real life, I would say I'm 
modestly well traveled at best. <laughs> but in Isaac, oh man, I've been everywhere, man. I don't even know if that's the tune, quite frankly. I don't even know if that's how that goes. Secret room? But yeah, all I'm saying is you gotta activate uh, sometimes a little extra excitement. What a rip, by the way. Um, now I'm like, okay, when we scapular, this might be the first time I'm actively actually using scapular properly, so bear, bear with me. This should give us a half sp Am I insane? Did they did they change it? <laughs> Maybe like eight years ago when people were actually using this item the way it was meant to be used, they they went back and said, hey, don't do that. No, that doesn't sound like the devs. Come on. Nerfing a, a highly specific uh, rare victory condition. Being accused of not allowing the player to have any fun. Come on now. That's we don't need to resort to personal attacks or whatever. Okay, I'm leaving, by the way. I'm not taking Tiny Planet. You know why? It's because we had the uh, marked on the last one and it, it it contributed to totally screwing us, alongside me also just playing badly and being unfocused, but Remembering that also focus and good Isaac play is not necessarily the subject of the series. What is the subject of the series? I don't know. It's it varies uh, day to day sometimes. Yeah, that was my that was my weekend. Uh, it's crazy. Like October's coming up, man. Feels like like September has gone by super insanely fast. We've been like really really busy. And it, it does not let up. Um, and I, again, I, I think about this a lot. The idea that um, we're very rude to our future selves. At least it, I am. But I think this is relatable. Um, I always think that I'm too busy to do anything else. Which contributes to an environment. And, and I recognize like the stress from my job is very silly. But that doesn't... It's like the same thing as like, you know... I look at it almost like, uh, you know, weight loss advice. I knew that was coming, man. Like, after all that, I knew that was coming. I didn't know that was a champion, but as soon as I saw that room, I was like, we're toasted. I'm going to run back like the world's fastest as Azel run. But I look at it like weight loss advice, you know? Like, it's very simple. Everybody knows, you know, the secret is... Uh, Eat less, move more. Of course, you can complicate it as much as you want or as little as you want, but the, the base uh, level conceit of it is very simple. Is you know, if, if you want to lose weight, you should take in less calories and do more exercise or you produce, uh, expend more calories. Um, but then, you know, that falls apart somewhat when you're like, you see a big bag of sun chips in front of you and you go, hey, can I have some sun chips? And then the host of the party goes, yeah, do it. You're just ballast. You might as well enjoy yourself. You know, they, sometimes the simple things are, are a little harder to enact. And that's, like, my job is not stressful. But having, like, a to-do list, your to-do list being impinged upon by stuff that shows up at the margins um, is is still stressful, weirdly enough. You know, whether you're... I, I'm Look, I'm not trying to say it's as hard as, you know, like, underwater welding or whatever. I'm just saying... Uh, the, uh, the, there's broadly speaking the same kinds of stresses apply. Hold on, I gotta close some applications in the background here. Gotta turn off my safe moon miner. Turn off. Okay, get that out of here. Okay. Um, even though it's silly, it, it still applies. But I'm always like, you know, like if you ask me right now, like, okay, could you do this thing today that'll take like eight seconds? I'd be like, it's not possible. It's not possible. Push it. I'll do it next Tuesday. How does I'm just so busy right now. I'll I'll do it next Tuesday. Then next Tuesday rolls around and I uh, have the exact same amount of time, which feels like very little. But part of the reason that I have so little time is that I push the stuff from last week to this week. So if you like everything, it it it's like the same as a, a business where you're like. 
hey, the job only takes five minutes, but there's like a 72 hour uh, wait to get access to the services. And you're like, it only takes five seconds. You're like, yeah, but there's, you know, we're only getting to the people whose job takes five seconds from a week ago now. So it takes it takes some time, you know. I think I, I guess the the gist of it is like I I think and I think it's like a maybe not universal human thing but a very common human thing is like I'm busy too busy to take on anything right now. However, in a week this is all gonna clear up. You're like a, adult life at a certain point is just constantly telling yourself that like yo know, September is really busy, but like in October I'm gonna have some breathing room. Then because you have that breathing room coming up, you start stacking stuff up. Then October shows up, and you go, uh, when did I get so busy? Let's just send it here. Uh, and then you go, oh, don't worry about it, I'll learn my lesson for November. And then I think you just keep doing that, like, uh, maybe for, like, 65 years until, you know, you, you, uh, either retire or die. One, one of the two. Um, give me, give me Azazel's Rage that once every four rooms turns us into Azazel, that should be weird. You know what that was? It was a cheap deal with the devil precedent, which is worth nothing. <laughs> when deals with the angel are good now, but oh, whatever. We're, we're just doing this one to banter and have fun. We could have just ended the episode, but I, I thought we were off on a, on a bit of a wave. So we'll try to do um, not not boss rush or anything like that. We'll just try to get a little confidence back. This is like a, a tolerance break uh, for us to some extent. But yeah, I kind of, I'm, I'm realizing, especially, like, bizarrely, the older I get, the more I, like, feel connected uh, to, uh, like, my, my pre-teen self, in the sense, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. Like, it's, it's not contra- oh, no, I, I didn't think that that would give us the big laser. Um, I thought we would just be Azazel, my mistake. I was thinking of the trinket, that's my mistake. Um, I think, like, uh, here's the way I would describe it, okay? I, my adolescence and, and much of my teenage years were spent, uh, as an only child, rural area, you know, no driver's license till I turn 16, uh, which is, I, I guess, literally, like, the law, but I'm just saying, like, I didn't get out that much, I didn't have, I wasn't, like, super secluded, and I was well socialized and stuff like that, but I was, I had a lot of, like, downtime, I was bored a lot, um, and used that boredom, as a, like a catalyst to learn stuff, which is cool and is positive. But I think naively, you know, as like a 15, 16 year old, I was like, oh, I can't wait till like this phase of my life is over. Um, and I can start, you know, living uh, an exciting jet setting life and getting up to, you know, New York, New York. And then um, kind of, you know, like in college, you're, things are different. You're like hyper socialized 24 seven a lot of the time. Um, and then, you know, you get out of school and you're, like, finding yourself for a bit. And now I've realized that I would uh, give anything to go back. <laughs> to have it. Not, not in the sense, like, when I, when I say give anything, don't take that out of context or, or to the extremes. But, I mean, like, the, the thing that I, like, miss and value the most right now is having some downtime where, like, there's nothing to do. Because it's not like when you have nothing to do, you're necessarily doing nothing. It's that you have the space to do, you know, to pursue whatever pops into your head in that given moment. And I, I don't know if that's, like, a, a a universal thing or if it's because I, like, grew up with that living in abundance of my environment. Like, the morphology of my brain is permanently wired to, like, feel like I need, I don't know, 45 minutes of just nothing time a day in order to be happy. Which has been a, a bit of a, a, a fight to get to lately for, you know, understandable and obvious reasons. But I'm, I'm, I think it's, believe it or not, I think it's like a progress or a sign of progress to get to the point where now I'm like, at least I know what I want. <laughs> what, I, what I want is to be able to, you know, in order to feel like not stressed out and, uh, you know, doing chat audits on like 12 year olds who are like, you stink. And then I do a chat audit and try to like reduce them to atoms. Um, I, I need that space, you know, on a, at least like a once every two or three days sort of basis where I can just sit for 45 minutes and be like, I wonder what happened to the lady who played olive oil in the Popeye movie? Shelly Duvall. I wonder, you don't, you don't hear that much about Chevy Duvall these days outside of the context of, 
you know, Jack Nicholson and, and Stanley Kubrick, uh, you know, being like real pieces of garbage to her on the set of The Shining. You don't hear that much about her apart from that. Wonder what she's up to. So I'm, you know, realizing I need to, I need to fight for that more. I'm constantly, like, in order to do what I want, I need to have space to do nothing, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, an another deal with some value? Perhaps or perhaps not. Either way, I'm happy to be here. And this is what this series is all about, you know, is uh, forget the item room. Mostly because we're running a little short on time. Not atypical. Let's see what we got here. But yeah, you know, learning to cope with it inch by inch. I think about that from time to time. The idea that, like... I mean, I think it's a, a, another aspect of, like, the grass is always greener. Like, when I was... And, and you, you know, you change over time. And I, I think, uh, you know, people tend to change into a way where they're a little bit less... Well, I, I wouldn't say less outgoing, but m they want... They're willing to sacrifice less for, like, social interaction versus, like, their own desires. Like, when I was a, a teenager, I would do anything to spend time with anyone. You know? You want to just sit in your car at the Wendy's? Okay, sure, that sounds great. Nowadays, like, you have to pass, like, a 20-step process in order to get me to hang out. What are we doing? When are we going? Can we rework it so it's in like my exact time schedule? Otherwise, I'm like, it's not worth it. I'll just read at home, you know? Which might sound curmudgeonly, but I think there's actually something kind of almost exalted in that, you know? Uh, the idea that like, you know, you enjoy your own time or the time that you spend with your your close family so much that you're like hey, You know, you're not just going out just to go out when you go out. It's like, you know, I really need this or like I really want to spend time with these people. It's not like uh, Ah, you know, it's ob obligatory. Let's put it that way um, But I, there is some sense I'm sure of like the grass is always greener, you know, because when I was a uh, when I was younger it was like, I have so much time. The only thing I want is, like, more things to fill it. And now that I'm older, I'm like, man, I got so many things. I, I'm not even worried about time from, like, a mortality standpoint. I'm worried about time from, like, a, a, a banality standpoint. I'm like, man, I just need, like, some space to go on Wikipedia. There's a lot. I, I, I donated to Wikipedia this year, and for the first time in my life, I haven't gotten my money's worth. That joke is kind of funny. Can we, can we at least admit that it hasn't been great gameplay so far? I do need to uh, defend myself. I think sometimes people take like this as complaining. It's not meant to be complaining at all, you know? I, I, I feel like I need to grab people by the collar sometimes and be like, you realize like how annoying uh, an Isaac video would be if like literally every second of it was saturated by just talking about how lucky in life I am? Like you wouldn't watch. <laughs> you would you would be so annoyed on a regular basis by by the uh, the things that were coming out of my mouth. You you know it, it's good to practice gratitude. Don't get me wrong, but like the universal human language of relatability is complaining about stuff. Like you know what's BS? Loud motorcycles. I've been thinking about this for for weeks, man. I don't know why. Like. The, the, if they made solar-powered motorcycles, you would never hear them. Because the only times I ever seem to encounter motorcycles is after the sun goes down. And then, you know, just outside of my house, you hear... Like, it, there must be some sort of rule where, like, you have to... If you have a motorcycle and you drive it at night, you have to idle it in front of your house for, like, half an hour just to make sure the whole street is awake. And then when the whole street is awake, that's where you rip it up and, and rev as fast as possible. I know it's old hat to hate on the motorcycle drivers, okay? But that's because they're still too loud. <laughs> I don't mean to, right? Look, any, anything I complain about, more or less, if you do it in a way that doesn't impinge on, you know, the enjoyment of others, who cares? I'm, I'm genuinely not the kind of person who, like, is at the age where I, you know, look outside of my house all day and, like, call the police on people who are mowing their lawn because it's making too much noise. But, you know, when it's, like, 
1 a.m. and I wake up because like a super loud motorcycle goes by and I'm like, oh, I hate loud motorcycles. And then like responsible, you know, financial advisors who happen to drive their motorcycle for an hour on the weekends are like, hey, we're not all like that. I'm like, I know, dummy, I'm not talking about you. You know, people, there, there's a, a lot of bad bald people, too. <laughs> There's <laughs> a lot of groups of, of bald people who are jerks when people are like, you know, oh, I hate, like, you know, prison gangs. I'm not like, hey, you know, not all bald people are part of a prison gang. I'm like, I'm like yeah, they understand that, I'm sure. I mean, I happen to be part of a, a gang in the prison. But that's just, no, I'm obviously not. I like to think that in prison I would get a lot of reading done, but it would probably be kind of miserable. I imagine. You ever think that maybe, um, anybody here ever go to prison? I don't believe in this conspiracy theory, but it's believable. Unfortunately, a conspiracy theory being believable is one of the things that makes it impossible to catch on. It has to be truly insane in order for it to reach any sort of critical mass these days. Because um, for some reason there's a subset of the world that have deluded themselves into thinking that the crazier something sounds, the more plausible it must be. Which makes, you know, no causative sense whatsoever. But, um, what if prison is depicted as so harsh and dystopian on film as a deterrent, as an organized deterrent to try to get people to not commit crimes. Because they're like, most of the people out there, their experience and their perception of what incarcerated life is like um, is based on like Oz, <laughs> like Shawshank Redemption and stuff like that. What if it's actually just like some buds hanging out, you know, making license plates and uh, what what else is, you know, reading a lot of books in the library. And it's, it's kind of just chilled out, but they don't want you to know that. I don't think that that's the case. I think, in fact, I feel very confident that it's not the case. Helmst ever. What if, man? Oh, that's what they, the CEO of Pfizer wants you to believe that prison sucks. Actually, it's freaking sick, man. It's just like a, it's like living in the dorms again. Probably not. Ooh, a little problematic. Ooh. Mmm. Privileged streamers suggest prison is fun. Not my streamer. Hey, you can't be mad at me. I had an insanely viral tweet this weekend, and, and I quote Dan Carlin style. I know you kids are all about devious licks these days, so let, let's take a second to talk about the most devious lick of all. Wage theft. One out of question mark. And then that's the final tweet. You can minus two me all you want. It's actually like, you know, it, it, it literally doesn't matter what your opinion is. Because <laughs> it's uh, the court of public opinion on Twitter has spoken, and it turns out I'm hilarious. Uh... I'm not going to explain the joke. Um, I already explained it to Malf. He, he tried to replicate the joke with one of the worst follow-ups I've ever seen in my life. He said, when you steal your friend's stinky socks, a devious lick. Not funny. I, I it's, it's funny how unfunny it is. Not to be super rude, but... Okay, please give me some damage. Um, this is every item that's ever existed. This is good, right? We got, like, triple brims? Yeah, kinda. <laughs> sure. Spirit heart? Nope. Okay. Fool? Alright. Um, good pill? Yep. Uh, infinite verps. By David Foster Wallace. I, I, I was gonna, I was trying to think of somebody with, with three middle names. Ah, uh, Infinite Jest by Sophie B. Hawkins. I've been thinking about that song a lot lately. Once every, like, eight years, I remember that song. Damn, I wish I was your lover. Can I tell you, so we, we have uh, people over. I don't want to go, you know, too much in the, the lewd direction. Um, but there is, I, I believe she says, uh, Monkey doesn't want to, it's the song that goes, do, do, Damn, I wish I was your lover. I said, anyway, in the second verse, she has one of the most insane lyrics I've ever heard in my entire life. It's, um, Monkey never wants to see you black and blue. I need to find the actual lyric, okay? Monkey 
never wants to see you black and blue. Um, this this monkey can't stand to see you black and blue. That's right. Okay. One second. Lyrics meaning. The song is called Damn I Wish I Was Your Lover. The top search. Lyrics meaning. I'll give you... Okay. This monkey can't stand you... Can't stand to see you black and blue. I give you something sweet each time you come inside my jungle book. And, and if you're like me, I know what you're thinking. This lady's calling her hoo-ha a jungle book? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's gross, but... Anytime I hear the song, I'm like, it's like one of the most thinly veiled metaphors I think I've ever heard, the, you know, in music. And, man, she's really... I mean, don't be so hard on yourself, ma'am. You had, you had a number one song. Oh, man, I wish I could name a second Kipling book. That would really hit the spot right now. <laughs> that joke could have popped if I was substantially more well-read. By the way, we're gonna die again. Which is... It actually just hilarious at this point like uh maybe not maybe not maybe not i went the wrong direction <laughs> oh man well okay either way i think the sophie b hawkins bit justifies the entire existence of this episode so all is forgiven i don't know man my head's not in the isaac game right now that's funny though I, I can't be too upset. It's humorous. We have fun here. I, I By the way, I think it's a great... I, I have a theory on songs. Um, especially, like, one-hit wonders. And by a theory, I mean, as usual, something I literally came up with two seconds ago to stoke the fires of conversation here. Um, songs that are bad... Like, the, the worst examples of songs from an era... Plus time is a formula for a, maybe not a song that's good, but for a cultural relic. So a song like Damn, I Wish I Was Your Lover, I don't even think it's a bad song, sincerely. But I, it, it's hard for me to evaluate because it's like just so sincere that it begs to be mocked. Um, there's like, it, it was invented pre-irony, right? Go ahead, hit me. I don't care. I'm, I'm freaking loco right now, man. Um, but I, I think, like, it, it did catch a lot of parody, you know, it, it, because it's, like, it's very, like, 90s women in rock style, like, Lilith Fair type jams. Um, like, kind of like an electric Sarah McLaughlin. Uh, but over time, it goes from being like, oh, kind of, kind of cringe to like, oh man, this song like really takes me back to a different era. By the way, have you ever noticed like in YouTube comments, there are, a, every song on YouTube has at least a dozen psychos in the comments lying and saying this exact situation happened to me exactly as the lyrics of the song. Don't, okay, can I, we don't have a whole lot of time here for this, but um, I told, one of my friends was expressing that he has empathy fatigue as a result of the pandemic. Um, so I said, I feel you, brother, my give a damn's busted, which is a song by uh, Jody Messina. Then I started looking up Jody Messina songs because I haven't heard any in a long time. I listened to Heads Carolina, Tales California, where they flip a coin and figure out where to live their lives. And then somebody in the comments is like, this literally happened to me in 1989. I met a woman at a, she was a waitress at a diner I like to go to to get coffee 24 seven. And then we ended up getting married. Her father lived in Carolina and I wanted to go to California. We literally flipped a coin. And I'm like, that never happened to you, you crazy man. Are you insane? You're in the YouTube comments. You're either 12 or 80. The story doesn't line up. Anyway, thanks for all the comments. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. It was a weird one, but we'll see you next time. My brain will calibrate at some point. See you then.